Please listen carefully to the following announcements. Women's Prayer Convention is now going on at Camp Early. Lay Ministries Leadership and Evangelistic Summit will be at Camp Early on April 13th to the 15th. Pastor and two delegates from the pastoral district are expected to attend. And more information will be given. Women's Ministry Department presents Women in Mission Operation Holder. This begins April 1 through to the 30th. Deaconess is on duty for April. Case Scarlett, Cecilyn Williams, S. Walker, Shirley Lane, Joan Cross. Deacons on duty for April. D. Stewart, L. Morris, K. Cross, D. Knight. Elders on duty for April, Elder Errol Martin and Elder Jocelyn Dillion. Children's Convention will take place on Sabbath, April 30th at the Dover SDA Church. Sabbath, the 28th of April, will be Stewardship Day. Sunday, April 29th. Pathfinders and Adventurers Fair at the Willardine Group of School. All members of Class 10, please meet with your teacher after Vespers, that's Brother Knight. Brother Joseph Smith is leaving to go back to the United States of America this Tuesday, April 10th, and he's asking for prayer on his journey back. I have some tickets here from Liberty Hall Church. They'll be having a concert. And this will be on May 6th. You can see the clerk that's working for more information. The National Youth Service Summer Program, they are already taking application forms. I apologize that I have not been here for the last three weeks. So I am now coming as best as you can, the first five persons to see me, you may get the five forms that I have. The deadline is this Friday. Lay Ministries Leadership and Evangelist Summit. Oh, I already read that, sorry. Youth Choir Practice this evening after Vespers. Dover Harvest, the 15th of April at 3 p.m. We are asked to support. And Children Ministries Coordinators meeting after Vespers, and this meeting will be held here at Kitsitown. On our sick and shutting list, we have Marion Taylor, Isaac Orr, Dahlia Rose, Edith Reed, Ivy Aaron, Edna Jackson, Carl Street, Lenora Bryan, Brother James Taylor, Noel Grace, Kevon Bennett, Orly Campbell, Noel Bonnick, Lyndon Foster. Do have a spirit-filled Sabbath. An omission from the announcements. Uh, as a reminder that Kitson Town's harvest is May 27th, and uh, we're asking everybody to mark that on your calendar. And um, we, uh, I'm inviting all the Sabbath school teachers and members of the harvest committee to a meeting this evening after best. So after Vespers, all teachers and members of the Harvest Committee, uh, please meet with me for a brief meeting to discuss our upcoming harvest. All members of Transform Band can meet immediately after divine service in the middle high.
Church will now stand for the call to worship. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all you people. For his love protecting us is strong. The Lord's constancy is everlasting. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Church is now called to worship. and magnify your name this morning. We thank you for the many blessings you have given us. Thank you for the invitation to come into your courts to worship you. As we do so, may we worship you in spirit and in truth. And may the blessings come down and glory fill our souls as we exalt your name forever and ever. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, are we happy to be in the house of the Lord today? If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord today, let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me hear you say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me hear you say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. If you're truly happy to be in the house of the Lord today, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I am happy to be here and I'm happy that you are here. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are people of the word so we should be happy people because we know that Jesus is coming again so on behalf of the pastor Pastor J.B. and Otten elders and leaders of the Kitsentown Seventh-day Adventist Church it is my distinct pleasure to welcome one and all but especially to our guests our lovely visiting friends we are so happy to have you here and we pray that you will continue to come and worship with us and for those of you who are not yet baptized and not yet given your lives to Jesus, we hope that you will do so quickly. Amen. All right, our opening song is hymn number 27. Hymn number 27. We we'll lift our voices in praise to God. <laughs>
affirm our faith in the words of the fourth commandment and the Lord's promise. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou lay the earth and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, but I will not have a son, not a daughter, not a master servant, not a maid servant, not a cattle, not a stranger than a few days. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all the and we are still on the Sabbath day. Wherefore, our Lord bless the Sabbath day and the Lord. Let us be our heart be told. In the name of God, in the Lord's holy name, in my father's house are many mansions. If you are not so, I will have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a show for you, I am going to pay you. As always, we at Kitson Town were blessed with good music, excellent singers, and today. One of our songbirds in Zion, Sister Keisha Wright, will bless us with the song of praise. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. We're pilgrims on a journey on the narrow road, and those who've gone before us light the way.
Mr. Love's a little children All the children of the world English, Chinese, French or Jew And the little Jamaicans too Jesus loves the little children of the world Good morning boys and girls Oh sir, my morning was brighter than that Good morning boys and girls Who am I? Uncle Ken. Okay, okay. Good morning, bigger boys and girls. Ah, yes. It's wonderful to be in the house of God today, don't it? Yes. I like how your face looks. It looks bright and chirpy and smiley. Give me another smile. Go on. Give me another. Move your arm from your face, man. Yes, and give me the smile now. That's a nice one. That's a nice. What's your name? Devon. Who? Devon. Devon. Oh, that's nice. We have another deaf one in here, but he's bigger than you. But you, you're going to get big like him one of these days. Hey, we are going to be talking about a little girl who loved fire. A little girl who loved fire. I must warn you that this story is a warning. Yeah. Now, Susie was only about four or five years old. You're four? Great, like, like Susie. But every time when mommy went into the kitchen and mommy was about to cook, mommy had to light the stove, don't it? Yes. And guess what mommy used to light the stove? Hmm? What do you think mommy used to light the stove? Matches. Yeah, matches, yeah, my matches. Yes, match. Yes, fine. And lighter. Well, we use matches. All right. And on this particular occasion, every time she goes in there, she will see mommy go with the box, take the match out of the, the box, and she goes, Chee! and she was so very impressed by the, the pretty, pretty, pretty fire. And she said, boy, that looks good. Anyway, mommy always tells her, Susie, do not play with the matches. And mommy always put the matches way out of the reach so that there was going to be no accident. But on this day, mommy was not in the house. Mommy was actually just gone down the road to a friend, not far. And she decided that she wanted to light the fire, strike the match. And so she got a stool and she draw it and she climbed up on the stool and she took down the box of match. And she took out one and she went, and it looked real pretty, but it never looked too pretty because there was too much light around the place. You know that when, when, when things are bright, 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 the little match not going to look so bright. So she decided that she would need some darkness. Some darkness. So she went into her room and she locked the door, but somehow or the other, it never looked dark enough. So she went in the bed. Yeah, man, she went on the bed. And uh, she said, she said, oh, 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 oh. And she pulled the cover over her head. And she sat up in the bed, man, with her legs them crossed, and, and the sheet over her head. And she took the match. And when she look at it, it looked pretty, 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 pretty. And she, <laughs> she feels so good about it. And then guess what happened? It burnt her fingers and she dropped it. And she dropped the match. And right in her lap. And before you know it, her dress had caught fire. And the bed had caught fire. And, and she started to cry and to scream. And just then mommy came in just in time. But all of this place was blazing. Blazing, blazing, blazing. And Susie was burnt. No, she didn't die, thankfully. Because mommy came just in time to pull her out, roll her over, and out her clothes. But she did suffer some burns. And for the rest of her life, Susie had to carry those burns as a mark of her disobedience. Because she did not obey what mommy said, she was burnt. It's a sad story, isn't it? But we are glad that it ended okay -ish. 
Hmm? So that she did not die. Boys and girls, whenever mommy says something, there are good reasons for it. Right? And even if you don't know the reason, and even if you can't explain the reason, mom wants you to be obedient. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Oh, this is right. Amen? So we're going to do the right thing and obey our parents. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Heavenly Father and God, your boys and girls are in front of you. And they want to be obedient, but sometimes, Lord, you know, the devil tempts them and they give in to him. We pray, oh God, that they, they will always remember that obedience is the way to go. May they remember the things that they are taught and may they do it. But Lord, we know that sometimes, even as adults, it's tough to do the right thing. And so, dear Jesus, we ask that you will be with them and give them the strength, the power to say no to Satan and yes to Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. God is good all the time. and all the time. All Praise the Lord. Deacons, please come forward to receive today's tithe and free love. We have different. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man gives his prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Let us pray. Holy Father, as we worship you today, Lord, with tithes and offering. Lord, let us ask our divine blessings upon us. Be with this church and help us, Lord, to live according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. The deacons will wait upon you for today's tithes and free offering.
got a scripture reading? The word of the Lord this morning comes to us from Revelation chapter 22, verses 11 to 16. Revelation 22, verses 11 to 16. We shall read together. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and warmongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. 16 and last. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. dwelling in a grand and awful time. Christian rose, fighting the warfare, cease not till the victory is won. Amen. Holy Father in heaven, with these words in mind, we humbly come before you now, dear Lord, recognizing, dear Jesus, that we are helpless on our own. But as we yield and surrender our hearts to you in obedience and love, we sure that we will be victorious. So as we come before you now, Lord, we see our sins standing in front of us. Please, Jesus, please forgive us. You know the shortcoming and the fault and the iniquity and the unrighteousness that each and every one of us bowing here. We pray now, dear God, that you will rain down Holy Ghost fire upon each one of us bowing before you right now, dear Jesus. May you purge out our heart now, dear God. May you burn out everything that is unlike you out of us, dear Jesus. Amen. And when we are burned and when we are purged and purified, oh God, may we experience it now, Lord. Let it not be just words spoken. But may we experience, we tire to come to church, Jesus, and we just pray and we just preach and we just sing and we go back home the same way. Many of us are getting fed up. We don't even want to come. When we hear the testimony sometimes, we don't even bother want to come back to church. 
But we pray right now, dear God, that you will revive us again, O Lamb that was slain, by burning and purging and pruning and purifying us. And when we are empty, O God, of sin, leave us not alone. Leave us not empty. But fill us with your blood. Fill us with your righteousness, dear Jesus. Father, you say, you write your commandments upon our heart. May you write it even now, dear Lord. Amen. Father, there are some of us who are just visiting this morning. have not yet accepted you. But dear God, may they feel a Holy Ghost power now, dear Lord, in their life that they will not leave here today the same. May we not leave today, those of us who are not yet accepting you, bowing here now, dear God. We will not leave here today without saying, Jesus. I want to walk the narrow way with you. Come into my heart, dear God. Father, there are some of us here, Lord, from our pastor to the elders right down to the last member, to the children, to the youths, that we are getting cold and indifferent. We know the way, yes. We were baptized, yes. But, Lord, we realize that something is missing. And, Lord, this morning, revive us again, we pray. And as we are having the weeks of revival, dear God, I pray, O oh Lord, that we will truly be revived. Father, some of us are brain dead. Some of us is the heart, the whole, the whole man, everything is dead. But in Jesus Christ, there is hope. Because your blood is life. So, Lord, may your spiritual blood, may you fill us now, Jesus. Go through each and every island, each and every heart, Holy Spirit of God. And wash us and cleanse us, dear God. Lord, let me experience you now, Jesus, as we have never experienced you before. Baptize us again, O Lamb that was slain. Jesus, we plead. Jesus, we beg. Father, we confess that we have sinned and we deserve to be cut off totally. But Lord, you are merciful. Amen. And you say you wish that none should perish, but that everyone should have a lasting life. Give us that life. Father, May you even seal some of us right now, dear God, for eternity, that we won't live in sin anymore. Lord Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Holy Father, our Creator and our friend, we have no one but you, Jesus. And we come to you now, dear God, because we realize that we are dying in sin. We realize that the world out there needs to hear of you, but how can we take the world to you when we don't have you in our hearts? Lord God of heaven, have mercy. Amen. Have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Give us one more chance, dear God. As you did for Adam and Eve, Lord, when you saw them with the fig leaf, Jesus. You didn't turn your back upon their naked shame. But Lord, you gave them skin to cover them, Jesus. Cover us in your righteousness, dear Lord. Each and every one of us, Lord, show us whatever sin, whatever shortcoming we have. And may we decide today to repent, not to go back the same way we come here today. Sometimes when people talk to us, we get upset. So Jesus, speak this morning, dear God. Speak to the hearts of our young people. Amen. Speak to the hearts of our children. Speak to the hearts of our leadership, dear God, from the church here right up to the conference. Speak, Lord. And may your servant hear. Amen. You say, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. Help us to know the voice of your Jesus. Call in this morning. Come, my child, you need not live in sin anymore. Come, my child, I have victory to give you, Lord. Give us victory this morning on our knees. That when we rise, we'll rise in the newness of life. When we rise, we'll rise with a heart to reverence your sanctuary. Let when this service come to a close, we will not have a bedlam of noise near this morning. This will be the beginning sign to show that we have met with Jesus and we are converted. Let us file out in decent and in order. Oh, God of heaven, help us. And Father, our marriages. Father, our marriages are broken. Some of us don't want to talk. We shame to talk. But Lord, something more. We have a marriage, a spiritual marriage, because we are called the bride of Christ. We are married to you, Lord. And if our marriage relationship with you is not right, no wonder it's not right with our earthly partners. So help us to get the marriage relationship with you right, God. And how can we get it right? That we communicate with you. And this takes in everybody. Whether we are married or not, we are married to Jesus. We might not have an earthly partner. So it's for everyone this morning. Let's get the communication with you right. Let's get the love for you right. Let's get the obedience to you right. 
cheering, listening, saying to you and you say to us, and we do what is right to each other. And when we get the relationship with you, the marriage will do right, then truly your Holy Spirit will show us to get it right with our partners. Lord, some of us women, and the women might be vexed with me this morning, but our mouth, our tongue, my mouth, my tongue, sometimes we say hurtful words to our husbands. Sometimes we are so rebellious. We are so domineering and dictatorial. But this morning, oh God, may you break down all those evil attitudes in us. And Lord, if we are not willing, you won't force us, because that wouldn't be love. So Lord, may we as women who are married this morning purpose in our hearts, that we are going to be more loving to our husband and to our families, Amen. more loving and caring to others around us, more respectful, more willing at times to compromise in a sense, not in wrong things, but when we see the right things, we say, yes, this is my way, but anyway, it's the right way, so I'm going to change. As for our husbands, Lord, some of us, we take the, the scripture wrong, that wife must submit. It doesn't mean that we have to bow down, it will walk upon us. And if husbands here are doing that, may we stop it. But we are to love our wives. We are to unite with our wives, O Lord. We are to go to our families and discuss the weaknesses of our wives. Father God, but as I say already, when we get the marriage right with you, the relationship with you, you will teach us and our marriage will better marriages. Amen. Lord, some of us, we are married and we want different things, financial, all sorts of things. But Lord, help us to realize that you will withhold from us what is not good for us. So in whatever state we are, let us be contented. And let us know, dear God, that you know best. And let our main focus not be on what is we accomplish on earth. But our focus will be what will we accomplish when we cross the last mile of the way. What will we be accomplishing when Jesus come and say, come my child. Enter into the joy of my Amen. salvation. Amen. Father, do for us more than we can do for ourselves. And help us to just yield totally. And when we lay our all on the altar of sacrifice, when we all by the Spirit is under the control of the loving hands of Jesus Christ, then we know we will truly be revived. Marriages will be revived, will be renewed, love and peace, and we'll be a happy people. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for blessing. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Praise God, amen. The privilege is mine to introduce the persons up here on the platform, persons that have been leading out uh, in divine service thus far, petitioning the throne of grace just now in such an able way, Sister Esther Chen, prayer ministry's coordinator for our church, and you can see why she would be the coordinator of the prayer ministries. Powerful woman in prayer. Beside her, we have Elder Jocelyn Dillon, and he did the offertory. On this side, we have Elder Ken Wright. Um, he did children's story, the scripture reading, affirmation of faith. I am Christopher Thomas, one of your elders, and the man of the hour, cometh the hour, cometh the man, and uh, he's none other than our own pastor, Pastor Javian Otten. Now, Pastor Otten is a young man, but um, spiritual 
spiritually speaking, he is much older than his age. He's somebody that has a profound understanding of the word of God and is someone that loves to do. He has a zeal for the work of God. And um, we can't take that as a given, even with some pastors. Right? You can't just say because he's a pastor, he's going to have a zeal. But it's evident based on his interactions, based on his words, that is someone that truly loves the Lord and truly desires to do his will. And today he is going to come to us to speak to us on behalf of our Lord. But before he comes, we will be blessed with a song of meditation by vocal cords.
a joy to know that Jesus will still be there. He will never leave us and he will never forsake us. What do you say? I am so happy today for the grand privilege of being on top of my grave. That is how the older folks always talk about it. We're on top of our graves. We're still alive. Amen? Amen. And the word of God says, let everything that has breath, what? Praise. praise the Lord. That is why we're here today. Amen. We're here to praise him. What do you say? Amen. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus because he's worthy to be praised. Amen. I want to welcome each and every one into the presence of God today. It is more than just being in church. You know, we must see the, the attendance of, to the house of God as meeting with God personally. Amen? We mu yes, it's an invitation. Ella. God has invited us to come and to spend quality time in His presence. And so today... As we go into the Word of God, we're conscious of the fact that the Lord is in His holy temple. Amen? And as we recognize that we are before a holy God, our hearts are reverent before Him. We know that, and you know, as we went through two nights, we were here Sunday night and Wednesday night, as we went through some of the presentations about the sanctuary, we recognized that in ancient times, the people were very careful about how they went into the sanctuary. They had to prepare themselves spiritually to present themselves to God. And if you went there carelessly, if you, if you took it lightly that, oh, it's just another service, I'm just going there, for show, burn up. The justice and the wrath of God would be instant. But we are happy for the cross. We're happy that through Jesus Christ we have grace. We can come boldly before the throne of grace to find favor in time of need. What do you say? The word of God to us today comes from the book of Revelation. And as we turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 22, I want to encourage those of us who can find it within our schedule. I don't think we, our schedule should be so packed, so busy that we can't find time for the Lord. For two weeks, we have already gone through one week. We are here today and this afternoon for Bible class. I'm looking for everyone to come out for Bible class this afternoon. We are going to be studying a very, very important subject. And I, I know you want me to tell you the topic so that you can decide if you want to come. But you have to come to hear the topic. All I will tell you it is that we're going to be going into the prophecies. One of the main prophecies um, out of which the Seventh-day Adventist Church was born. And I want you to come out this evening at what? 3.30. 3.30, am I right? 3.30. So that we can start our Bible class on time. It promises to be good, brethren. And then tomorrow evening, we are going to come back here again as we continue in the Word of God. We want to be revived through the Word of God. Amen? And through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to see you here tomorrow evening. The, the police have given us a lot of time to work with. They, they close down other institutions at 7 o'clock, but they said church can go on until 10 o'clock. Isn't that good, brethren? God is good. Because it could have been different. They could have said, you know what, close down everything, 7 o'clock, and have a curfew. But they have given us the opportunity to come out and hear the word of God. There is coming a time, brethren, when they might have that law enacted for a long period of time where we cannot come out here in the night. Hello? That's where we're heading in. The world is heading into a, a, a crisis. And so we have to ensure that when we have the opportunity, we feed on the Word of God. So tomorrow evening and then Wednesday evening and next week, Sabbath, we repeat the process all over again. 
And I want to let you know that by God's grace, next week's Sabbath, we are going into the pool. Amen, somebody? The water will be troubled. And I believe that there are persons even here today who need to step right in. What do you say? Amen. Revelation chapter 22. The word of God says to us from verse 11, He who is unjust, let him be what? Unjust still. And he who is what? Filthy, let him be what? And he who is what? Let him be what? And he who is? Let him be what? This word here is something to consider. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. The subject for contemplation this afternoon, the close of probation. The close of probation. Let us pray. Father God, today we recognize that we're living on borrowed time. The signs are evident that your heavenly high priestly rule will soon come to an end. And you will take off the priestly garment and you will put on the kingly garment. When you will return as king of kings, and Lord of Lords. We recognize, O oh God, that all of us must stand before your judgment seat. We recognize that even now there is a judgment that is taking place in the heavenly sanctuary. And so we come to you today conscious of the fact that we must allow you to eradicate sin from our lives. So as this word goes forth today, I pray that you will work on me first. So that I will not only preach the word, but I will live by the word. And those who hear your words today, O oh God, I pray that a radical transformation will take place so that we will live in readiness for your soon coming. Speak to us now, we pray, for we are listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, according to the Word of God, we are living on borrowed time. And I want you to come back later. Let me explain to you what I mean by that in our Bible study. But the, 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 the message that we receive in Revelation chapter 14, I want you to th turn there with me. Revelation chapter 14. And I want you to look at verse 7. The Word of God says, uh, let's read from verse 6. Then I saw another angel doing what? Flying in the midst of heaven, having what? The everlasting gospel to do what? To preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. What is the message to everyone that we must preach? It says what? Fear God and do what? Give glory to Him for what? The hour of His judgment has come and do what? Worship Him. Who made what? Heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of water. So my brothers and sisters, it is clear to me that we are living in what is known as judgment hour. We are living in a moment when God is ensuring that those who are to be saved will be sealed for eternity. 
And I heard in the prayer, as Sister Chen prayed, that there might be even some here today that are willing to receive that seal from God. And I want to say, yes, I would want God to put his stamp of seal on me to say, Hutton, you are ready for the kingdom. That is my heart's desire today. But in order for God to do that, we must submit ourselves to him. The word of God tells us that there is coming a day when multitudes of people will wish that they had listened to those who were sharing the word of God with them. The Bible tells us that there is coming a time when people will want to hear the word of God, but they will not be able to hear it. They will wish they had taken advantage of this small window of opportunity to receive Jesus in their lives. They will wish they had taken opportunity to receive his righteousness before the end of all things. In Jamaica, we have a proverb that says, if me did know, always there back. Hello? You know what that means, right? Many of us find ourselves in situations that are not favorable. Many of us find ourselves in situations that, you know, we even make the problem for ourselves. And when we are found in that problematic situation, you will say, if me didn't know. But God is saying to us today, my brothers and sisters, that knowledge has come to Kitson Town. What do you say? And all of us must recognize that by the knowledge of the word of God, by the fact that we have heard the gospel, we are without excuse. We can't say if we didn't know. Are you with me? I'm talking to you about the close of probation. After it is too late, after the time of probation closes for mankind, there will be a famine in the land. Are you with me? Not a famine for bread or for water, but for the hearing of the word of God, it will not be found. Amos 8 verses 11 and 12 is the text which I quote. It says, Behold, the days come and say the Lord God. Says who? Lord. The Lord. So if this was only on the account of Pastor Hutton telling you that these days are coming, you could just turn and leave right now and say, that is just man's word, but I'm here to let you know that God is speaking to his people. There's a day that is coming, say the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land. So God himself is going to send it. Are you with me? Just as much as God is the one who sends the everlasting gospel through the power of the Holy Spirit into the world. He is going to send a famine in the land. There was coming a time when Hutton will want to preach, but God will shut up his mouth. Hello? There is coming a time when we will want to come to church, but we cannot come out here to worship God unmolested. You know what I've observed about these? You know, it's very easy for us to be <laughs> controlled or confined by the government, you know. It's very easy. We talk about democ uh, democracy and we have rights. Uh, listen to me. Don't be fooled. All the government needs to do is to declare some state of emergency. Talk about rights. Talk about privacy. I told you that I was on a bus, and, and listen to me, in all my life, I've always looked at it from the perspective of, I am a law-abiding citizen of Jamaica, and I must get respect from the police and the soldiers and all of that. I am not going to put my hand up on no vehicle and make them search me. That's what I used to think. My mind changed quick, 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 just a few weeks ago. I was on a bus, Elder, the only one on the bus in a jacket suit. <laughs> Elder... I was on my way to my younger brother's baby blessing. My mother was on the bus. My father was on the bus. My older brother was on the bus. My, 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 my um, cousin. A whole lot of people were on the bus. And I, I made a mistake because I didn't have a vehicle that time. So I said, you know, I'm in a, carrying no clothes in a bag. I'm just going to dress from home and go. I was the only one on the bus in a jacket suit. And as we were going along through Bog Walk, 
somebody stop the bus and say, anybody have gun? Anybody have drugs? Make it known and make sure not leave it here so because them down the road. And everybody on the bus started laughing, you know, and like we take it for a joke. When we, we got to the checkpoint, they stopped the bus. And I buttoned up my jacket because I said, boy, I'm me going to get to it today. They not touch me. Come to know. They said men one side, women one side. And I was going with the men and two soldiers just stopped me. I could not go with the rest of the men because they're in a jeans and t-shirt, regular dressed men. But I was the only one on the bus in a suit and they were looking at me. I came up to something, you know. And the soldier was about to search me. He said, sir, put your hands on the bus and spread your legs. We're going to search you. I said, you're going to touch me? He says, yes, I'm going to touch you. I'm going to search you. I took off my jacket quick and I said, look, I don't have anything. And he says, sir, put up your hands on the bus. We're going to search you. And I put up my hands on the bus. I said, boss, I'm going to use them something here. Now. And I put up my hands on the bus. And I put my legs about like maybe that wide. I didn't want to make it look so bad, you know. So I put it about that wide. And the soldier used his foot to remind me that it's a spring. For the rest of the journey, I was upset. I was furious. And I had my jacket in my hand while he was searching me. And when he was finished patting me up and down and all of that, I was about to go back to the bus and he said, hold on, come back. I'm going to search your jacket yet. And he took the jacket from me and he searched it. And I felt like a criminal. I was talking to one of my elders, joking about it as we were coming up. And I was saying, Ella, you know what they do to me the other day? And he was laughing at me and he was saying, the pastor, them do you that? I said, yes. And by the time we got down there, they took him out of his car. And then I spoke, I went to a female soldier, quick, 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 but I saw the male, males over I went over with a female and I began to talk to her and I began to tell her I'm a pastor and all of that. I didn't want to put up my hand again on the, on the vehicle. And I saw my elder with his hands and they were searching him. It is telling me, brethren, that there is coming a time on the land when it may be even worse than that. Where so-called right to worship and so-called right for this and right for that will no longer be. We put up tents now and we have crusade. They might have a, a, a law in place to say, you're making too much noise. Hmm? One of my colleagues who's a pastor in England, he says that his church is, is soundproof. Because of where the church is in London, they, they have to make sure that they lock, Ella, the doors are locked and the thing is soundproof. So they don't annoy anybody who is nearby. We have to recognize that there is coming a time when there will be a famine in the land. Hear what the word says. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. Some people are going to leave America to come to Jamaica. No word. They go to England. No word. They go to Africa. No word. No word to be heard. Sadly, my brothers and sisters, it will be said of such individuals as found in Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20. The harvest is past. The summer is ended and we are not saved. The harvest is past. Enough preaching. Enough altar call. Enough baptism. God will say enough is enough. And these individuals who are on the outside will have to stay on the outside. Those who are filthy will have to remain filthy. When we realize that this is the reality of the judgment. We should decide by the grace of God to make it in today while we still have a choice. While we still have the chance. 
Revelation chapter 22 gives us that declaration that will be uttered from heaven. And brethren, the, the, the fact of the matter is, we don't know when this declaration will be uttered. It could be today. And, and some of us might be saying, oh, God is gracious and merciful. But let me tell you something. If you and I are cut off in our sins, we don't make it right with God. We will remain in the condition of sinfulness. Lost eternally to damnation. So our probation can close in death as well. So this event, when a declaration is made from heaven, he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. This event is called the close of probation for every humanity, for everyone on the earth, for all humanity. So this is the point at which every human being, your eternal destiny is settled. Then there will be a time, at that time, mercy doors will be closed. A line will be drawn between the righteous and the unrighteous. According to the scriptures, when, the, when probation closes, the next thing that will happen is the second coming of Christ. And I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, that after G when Jesus comes, it is not time for us to appear before the judgment seat of God to give an explanation. Sometimes preachers make it sound as if when Jesus comes, you're going to have a chance to come before him and to say, Lord, you know, say, I'm a granny, let me never make it. I'm a father, let me never make it. It's a hypocrite in the church, why I didn't make it. It's a job, it's a boyfriend, not a girlfriend. That time is not for excuses. Hello? So after the declaration is made, Revelation 22 verse 12 says, And behold, I am what? I am coming quickly. And my reward is what? With me. So it's not coming with an undecided thing. God is ensuring that the reward is made up before he comes. My reward is with me. To give every man according as his what? Work shall be. And God is not saying to us that we are saved by good works, but he is saying that we are saved unto good works. Are you with me? The evidence of salvation should be there. My brothers and sisters, Christ is now ministering as our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. And I, I, I spoke to the brethren about the day of atonement. When all of Israel were summoned to come before God. And the people had to ensure that before that day closes. That their sins were covered by the blood of the Lamb. Are you with me? They were summoned before God. And they were, they were told that they need to be cleansed from sin. Because anyone who is found with sin in his or her life at the end of that day would be eternally cut off. My friends, we are living in what is known as the antitypical day of atonement. Where God, ha God has summoned all of earth to come before him in repentance. In penitence to receive salvation before the door of mercy closes forever. So long as Christ is our heavenly high priest, so long as he has on that priestly garb, we have a mediator between man and God. We have salvation, we have mercy, we have grace that is provided for sinners. But my brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that when Christ seizes his heavenly high priestly ministry and when he steps out of the sanctuary, probation will close for everyone. Hebrews chapter 7 tells us 
that he is our high priest. But we have another word from Revelation chapter 19. And I want you to go there with me. Revelation chapter 19. He is our high priest presently. We can come to him for grace. We can come to him for forgiveness. But there is coming a day soon and very soon. When he will become our judge. Are you with me? When he will become the one who will dispense the reward to everyone. Revelation chapter 19 verse 14 says, And the armies in heaven clothed with fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should what? Strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with what? A rod of iron. He himself treads the what? The winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name that is written what? King of kings and what? Lord of lords. This sounds not like the, how he came as a baby, a helpless baby in a manger. He's not coming as a suffering servant as he was nailed to Calvary. But my brothers and sisters, he has given us probationary time to prepare to meet him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I want to know how we will stand before him on that day if our sins are not washed away. I want you to know that God has given us enough evidence to prompt us, to lead us, to make a full surrender to him. Such was the case in the days of Noah. After Noah had done preaching for over 120 years. Come on now somebody. If I call for a series of meetings and I say we're going to come out here for two weeks. Some of you will not come more than one or two nights. People look at me with a strange look. It's true. If I say we're going to have a crusade and I tell you that it's two months, you'll think I'm mad. Noah had a crusade for 120 years. Non-stop. And as he built that ark, the spirit of prophecy tells us that every tree that fell, every stroke of the hammer was a weakness against the people. And by the way, did you know that some of the people helped Noah to build the ark? And they did not go into the ark? They did it out of mockery, some of them. Some had good intentions. They had all intention to make it into the ark, but good intention is not enough. Are you with me, somebody? Good intentions are not enough. My daddy told me that his daddy told him that there is a bar in Kellett's Clarendon with a sign over the door. It is my intention to get a spirit's license at the next licensing session. Now my grandfather died long, long, long time ago. My father is now 65 years old. And I'm getting there. I'm getting old. And I can take you to that same spot. And they just paint over the same. When it wear out, they just paint it over. We have intention. And when those people who go around to regulate them see that sign over the door. I don't know if there's a clause in the law or something that you can't trouble them if they have intention. But they keep that good intention there for years and they never change it. The, the road to hell is paved with what? Good intention. I intend to give my heart to the Lord, but I never did it. I have good intentions, but that is not enough, my brothers and sisters. The Bible tells us that after Noah was done preaching, that God himself shut the door of the ark. You know why God had to shut it himself? Noah, Noah heart soft. And Noah, 
you know, that is, that is, that is, that is, that is not my prerogative, my brothers and sisters. When God says enough is enough for you, no matter how much I love you, no matter how much I'm, I'm sorry for you, that is it. If it were up to no alone, those ungodly, rebellious people would have gone into the ark. And that is why I must tell you, my brothers and sisters, that we cannot make it into God's kingdom if we are not obedient, if we are not willing to submit ourselves to his will. You can't make it because you would go to heaven and mash up things. And God already had one rebel up there already. And they have to kick him out. And God not kick out no more rebel. Are you with me? So everyone who is going to make it to the kingdom of God must be obedient and not be rebellious. Are you with me, somebody? So in the days of Noah, I want to let you know that probationary time can close and you're still alive. Hello? You are still alive, but your probation has closed. The Spirit of God leave you. That is why the Bible tells us in Ephesians 4 verse 30, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed for the day of redemption. My brothers and sisters, to grieve the Holy Spirit of God means that we constantly reject His plea. We constantly push Him away. We constantly deafen our ears to what God is saying to us. Let me tell you something. God has shame. Are you with me? You understand what I'm saying? Because if I ask you for a favor over and over, you keep telling me no. Especially if you run me. Anybody ever run you yet? Lord, help me. If somebody ever say move. Anybody ever run you, sir? Move. And, and, and they flash their hand. Lord, you feel small. This you. Insulted. I wonder how God must feel. He has given us the best of heaven for our salvation. And we look at him and we say, move. Go away from me. I don't have time for you. Uh, some more convenient day. You know, I am busy with my life. Why are you interrupting me? Go away. When you have gone, and you know, I, I thank God for his grace. I thank God for his grace. Because had it not been for grace, God would have left some of us a long time ago. And let me tell you something, it's not, it's not necessarily the number of years that you have spent outside of a relationship with God. But it's, it's all about the number of opportunities that you have gotten to give your life to Jesus. For there are some people who have lived all their lives and they have not gotten the opportunity to give their heart to God and God prolongs their probation. But there are some of us who are born in the church, almost literally, grow up in the church, know the truth, hear the messages of God, and yet we harden our heart. That is a risk that we are running. The Bible says for seven days, after the ark's door was shut, the ark was still on the ground, you know. Are you with me? The ark was still on the ground, so it was a test of faith for Noah and his family. But it was also evidence that the people who are outside, even though they were still alive, they were walking dead. They were what? Living dead or walking dead. Their probation had closed. Just before the coming of Jesus Christ, we will have people walking about just as much as they were walking about. But no hope. No probation, no, no salvation for their probation has closed. These people in Noah's days, their probation had closed. The door of mercy was shut. And when the flood came, and the ark was lifted off the ground. The wicked ran to, 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 to salvation at that time, but it was too late. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, the, the door of heaven's sanctuary is slowly swinging shut. 
It is slowly but surely being shut. The door of the ark was a prototype of the door of the heavenly sanctuary. And when it is shut by God himself, no man can open it. When God says it is finished, it will be finished. When Jesus is interceding on our behalf as our high priest is finished, it will be finished. The door of the Holy of Holies where Christ is now interceding on our behalf, it contains the command in, inside the Holy of Holies. The commandments of God are there. The Ark of the Covenant is there as I told the brethren on Sunday evening. But these are there to tell us, my brothers and sisters, that the only way that we can be saved, the only way that we can have salvation, is if we obey the laws of God. Jesus cannot intercede for us outside of obedience. Are you with me? Are you listening to me, brethren? Let me explain what I mean. In the Holy of Holies, we have the Ark of the Covenant. So God has made a covenant with us. He says, I am giving my son, Jesus Christ, as the substitute for your sins. And he says, in return, I ask for your obedience, for your love, for your loyalty. A covenant cannot be kept on one side alone. While God would love to do all of it all by himself, something must be done on our part. And all he says, accept the free gift of salvation. Come to me, I will give you the strength that you need to serve me. I am tired of hearing people saying to me, Pastor, I am not ready to serve God because me no said me come today. Me go turn back. Lord, help me now. That is the devil telling you. Don't go to the Lord because you're going to turn back. You're not going to make it. If God says, come, he will give you the grace. He will give you the strength to make it. What do you say? My brothers and sisters, we need to remember that before the coming of the Lord, Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking and by the way, you know, anyway, you have the party, then you know, it full to the brim. They were eating and drinking, and they were marrying and giving in marriage. By the way, is there anything wrong with eating and drinking? Don't answer so quickly. It depends on what you eat. It depends on what you drink. Is there anything wrong with getting married? Don't answer so quickly. It depends on who you're getting married to. And, and you might think that anything that we see now is new. The wise man Solomon says there's nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. Listen, social media is the new media. And some of the news that come on social media might be fake news. But if you don't go so, you nearly go so. I saw... A video of a woman, the dog dressed up in a suit, you know, Ella. Ella, the dog dressed up in a real suit, like suit, bow tie and something. The woman is getting married to the dog. She's in her wedding clothes, real wedding clothes. Here comes the bride and all of them, something there. And the dog is as happy. She gone to the dog, Zella. The world has become a crazy place. It's getting from bad to worse to worse. The Bible says that in the days of Noah, 
the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And the Bible says that it grieved God that he had made man on the earth. He was sorry that he had made man on the earth. And God declared judgment upon the land. But I'm happy for grace. Amen, somebody. Even though God gives us a judgment, our message, it is not a message of fear and doom and gloom and damnation. It is a message to prepare. Are you with me? Come out of Babylon, my people, so that you will not partake in her plague, so that you will not receive of her sins. It's a message of hope. As God made his declaration that he's going to have to do something about it. The Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. As I looked at how this sentence is constructed in the Hebrew text, it says that grace sought an opportunity and found Noah. English, English says Noah found it. Noah wasn't searching for it. Noah didn't even know what was going on in God's mind until God came and said, Noah, this is what I am going to do. So Noah did not understand what was going on in God's mind. It was God's mind that brought the plan of grace. So God sought for an opportunity to dispense grace. And Noah was that one by whom the grace of God will be dispensed to the world. I want to let you know that the Seventh-day Adventist church stands as God's last day church to preach a certain message that other churches can talk about, but they can't preach it. Are you with me? When we preach the word of God in Revelation 14 and we say, you know, we use it for affirmation of faith every Sabbath. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. And we talk about him who made the heavens and the earth and all of that. The worship, the issue of worship. And the Sabbath, and you saw it in the media where they're saying, oh, seven Adventist people are having, a tr having hard to get a job. You think it's not yet? But the issue of worship, obedience to God's commandments. There are few preachers who can stand up and preach. Some of them sound like they're making sense, but they're not making sense. Some preach from the glean, and people like to hear popular preaching. But when you lift up the word of God, people say, oh, see the doom, doomsday preacher there. We don't want to hear from him. So in the days of Noah, that is what was happening. But God gave a warning for the people. The Bible also tells us that as it was in the days of Lot, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. And Jesus references the days of Lot in a very marked way when he says, remember Lot's wife. What is there to remember about Lot's wife? Lot's wife. She, well, the whole family was living in Sodom and Gomorrah. They were not Sodomites. But they were living with them. And that's where the word come from. It is like Jamaican or English, you know. It's a real place. So you must understand the word I just used. And not everybody down there were doing homosexual activities. But it was, it was a city that was popular for that. Now the, the man of God took his family to live there. And he sought to preserve a certain sense of godliness in his family. But it is dangerous. Are you with me? It is dangerous to be on forbidden ground. Ella. It is dangerous where you pitch your tent. You must, be, you must be careful. Some of us say, oh, I, 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 I am all right. It is well with me and my God. I am all right. But our life is intertwined with the things of the world. Lot's wife was on her way to salvation, but her heart 
was behind in Sodom. And God made a very direct and very straightforward, gave them a straightforward instruction. Go out, don't look back. And by the way, God had to pull them, the angel of the Lord had to grab them and pull them out. And that's how some of us have to be saved. Some of you will not be baptized unless one of your family members come and grab you even by the, the collar, not by the throat. You squeeze out the light. And say, you, you need to come to the Lord. I'm not leaving you behind. A friend must say to you, you must come to the Lord. I'm not leaving you behind. God grabbed them and was taking them out. But her heart was not with God. And the Bible says she became a pillar of salt. May we allow these facts, my brothers and sisters, not to frighten us, but to compel us to continue to study the word of God. To take advantage of the fact that we still have time available to us to repent. May we be thankful that God has seen it fit to spare our lives so that we can make it right with him today. May we use this opportunity to feed on the word of God before the famine comes upon the land. May we incline our ears to the word of God May we allow the word of God to find lodgment in our hearts. Proverbs 22 verse 17 says, Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply your heart unto knowledge. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. The word of God is saying, if you have ears to hear, you must hear. So what must I do to be saved as I close? What must I do to be saved? Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 9 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return. Let him what? Return. Where do we belong? We belong to the Lord. So we need to return. There are some people here today, you were in the faith and you left. Return. Return unto the Lord and he will have what? Mercy upon him and to a God for he will what? Abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. We go back where we started. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. The final episode of earth's history. is unfolding before our eyes. As Jesus says in verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say what? Come. The Holy Spirit is calling you today. The spirit and the bride is a church. So the church is saying come. The Holy Spirit, my brother, my sister, today is saying to you, come. And let him who hears say what? Touch somebody that is beside you and, and, and say, come. God is calling you today to come to him. God is calling you. And let him who is thirsty, what? Come. I, 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 I'm wondering if somebody here today is hungering and thirsting for God. And whosoever will, let him what? Let him come.
take the water of life freely. Will you come, my brother and my sister? Will you come? Today, we're going to sing a song from the hymnal number 604. The song says, We know not the hour of the Master's appearing, yet signs are foretell that the moment is nearing when he shall what? Return, tis the promise most cheering, but we know not the hour. I don't know when the time of probation will close for the earth. But I must preach with imminence, with urgency, inviting people to make a decision for the Lord. And so today as you stand with me, I'm not calling everybody to the altar today. I'm not calling you to the altar today. So that you can feel good about yourself. You know, just feel, oh God, I've done, look, at least I've gone to the altar today, God. So at least you will not strike me. Because sometimes we do that with God, you know. We friend him up. That is not what God wants of us. We appease him. Or we try to. I am calling you today because you love him. I'm calling you today because you want to be saved in his kingdom. I'm calling you today because God has laid a burden on my heart for souls to be saved in the kingdom. And so if you're serious about your salvation, my friend, if you know within your heart that you need to fix it, you need to fix it, you need to get right with God. I'm inviting you to come today to make a, a full surrender, not a partial surrender. I'm calling somebody to make a full surrender today. Give it all to Jesus. Say, Lord, I don't know about tomorrow. But I know that you hold my tomorrow in your hand. And I love you too much to turn my back on you. I want to receive you in my heart. Will you stand with me? We know not the are. Number 604. As we sing the song today, those who are coming to the altar, I'm going to invite my elders just to come forward to, to meet these individuals at the altar. Those who are coming to the altar today, we're going to pray a special prayer for them. I want Sister Chen to pray a prayer for them today. Our prayer ministry is leader. Just to pray a special prayer for those who are coming forward today. And as you come, you're coming because you love the Lord. Because you want to be saved in His kingdom. We know not the hour. Sing the song. We know not the hour of the Master's as you come today, the Lord is waiting for you, my friend. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. The Lord is waiting for you today. The Lord is waiting for you today. Will you come? You are here today. You have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus in baptism. If you're young, he's calling you. If you're in a youth, he's calling you. If you're in a middle age, he's calling you. If you're an elderly person, he's calling you. He wants to save you. But we know not they are. God bless you, my friends. As you come today, the Next verse. Who are seeking salvation. There's truth in the book. 
of the Lord's revelation. Each prophecy points to that great consummation. But we know not the hour. Is there someone else who is coming today? Jesus is calling you to salvation. He's calling you to make a surrender to him today. Will you come, my friend? He will come. In the clouds of his father's bright glory that we go. Before we sing the next stanza, we're going to take it down. As God's people are coming, this is a personal decision you're making today. This is a personal decision you're making today. This is a personal decision. Either you're going to say yes to the Lord, or you're going to say no to the Lord. You may say no today for the last time. Or you may say yes today and receive salvation from God. It is dangerous to say no to salvation, my friend. So if you're here today and you know within your heart that you should be at the altar, come. Come. A few years ago, I spoke to a young lady who was on that line of, you know, decision. I, I don't know if I should come. I, I, I'm wondering. And as I spoke with her and I pleaded with her and I told her that God wants to save her. She looked at me and she said, my next birthday, I will get baptized. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right with God. It so happened that as time went on and she, you know, you're talking, she could still come to church. Still, you know, baptism come, baptism go, programs I told you already that I have a date. And I'm not doing it before that date. Well, the day before her birthday, she got sick and she went into the hospital. Elders and everybody says, well, oh, it don't look like she's going to make it. Remember, she was supposed to be baptized on her birthday, but she spent that time sick in the hospital. Went to her hospital bed to pray with her. She barely could just open her eyes and groan. Cancer. And not, you know, this thing, some people will think that they're healthy. But then suddenly, boom, you are taken down. Well, the cancer must have been there a long time. But she was on probationary time with it. Went into the hospital the day before her birthday. Didn't come back out alive. Well, the doctors would not allow us. Because she was in there now. She wanted to be baptized. But the doctors would not allow us to take her out to be baptized and to take her back to the hospital. Probation had closed for her, at least in terms of her decision to walk into the pool and to surrender her life to the Lord. I am saying to you that next week's Sabbath, I am going to be here 
by God's grace. And if I'm not here, one of you elders will be here. But we're going to ensure that somebody standing at the altar here, even now, will get that opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. That's the only reason we, keep, we have church here. It's not because we want to have a nice program. It's because we want people to be saved in the kingdom. And if you are so inclined, if you have that desire in your heart to be saved, and you want to be in that number next week's Sabbath, at the end of the service, when we have the final prayer, we're going to ask you, and we have some cards here. I want you to, by the way, I want you to take one of these cards. If that is your desire, you're at the altar. Take one of these cards. Put your name on it. Put a contact number on it. We want to ensure that if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you are frightened, if you are worried, and you, you're wondering, am I really ready for this? We can make contact with you. Take one of these cards, my friends. Take one of these cards. Take one of these cards. Put your name on it. Put a contact number on it. Those who have come forward today, if you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus in baptism, take one of these cards. Put your name on it. Put a contact number on it so that we can reach you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, with grateful hearts, we stand now to say thank you, Lord, for mercy one more time. Thank you, Lord, for giving us another opportunity to make it right with you. Your man servant has done his work, so we know the blood won't be on his shoulder. Your Holy Spirit has done the work and will continue to do, so we know that if we live here today and harden our heart and stick to our neck, we will not be saying no to Seventh-day Adventist Church. We won't be saying no to Pastor Hutton and the elders. We will be saying no to Jesus Christ. And who here can say no to the Lord? Who here can kick against the prick? Who here dear enough to stand against Christ, O oh Lord? Help us that as we dismiss and leave here now, we will mold over in our heart what was said, and we will make it right. Thank you for those who step forward to the altar. Those who are members of the church recognize that there is something in our life need to be rectified. And those who have not yet accepted you in holy baptism, thank you that they realize that we need to do so. For those who are standing by, may we just continue to let the Holy Spirit have his own way, that when the Lord shall come, which is very soon, when our probation shall close, which might be even sooner, the Lord will find us ready and prepared to meet him. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and for blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, everyone. Those who came forward, we want you to please fill out one of these cards. We're going to take you step by step. Some of you will be ready for next week. Some will not be ready for next week. But we want to study with you. We want to visit with you and pray with you. God bless you.